warm in here today. To my dearest YouTube friends, that's you. Despite answering the question of what material I'm using in my last video, I am still being asked the question of what material I'm using. It is not peanut butter or Nutella. It is a simple clay called Cheval. There's nothing here, I just thought it felt official to do that. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Who doesn't love a good snow day? It's like the single use divine blessing gifted to us from mother nature, which forces the world around us to slow down, regenerate, and take some me time. I love snow days. Except for shoveling. Shoveling sucks. I always get stupid looks from my neighbor. My neighbor's kind of a douche. I always thought it would be cool to gather up all the snow in the yard and make a big snow ad. It's super cold. I don't really like the cold. Like two big massive mounds. But I guess they wouldn't be that tall because I'm only five, seven and a half. Actually, they must make ladders especially for that purpose. Cold in the studio. Clay doesn't want to stay warm. But anyway, I'd sculpt his face right in the middle and then coming out of his mouth, there'd be a big arc of sh Sculpting is hard. I don't even like sculpting. Huge droplets in his yard with middle fingers sticking up and then maybe invite some of you guys over to help and even if you can't sculpt it doesn't really matter because the uglier the better. Just use ZBrush. Then watch him come outside and laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> then I guess the only logical thing to do at that point would be to put it on YouTube for anyone that couldn't make it here for themselves to see. Follow your dreams, kids. Ah, <sighs> snow days. I usually take these opportunities to catch up on the ever-growing list of games that I have that I've yet to get through. A nice hot cup of coffee and an escape to a virtual world I'd hate to find myself in in any other capacity. So this time, instead of inciting a war with my neighbor, I was lucky enough to have a snow day right near the release of the Resident Evil 2 remake. I've always been a huge fan of Resident Evil ever since I played the original back in like 95, 96. Back then it was mind-blowing, even with the silly dialogue, the blocky graphics, the poor voice acting. <laughs> You're right! Thanks, Jill. I spent many nights staying up late exploring the world of Raccoon City, and since then those games have left a footprint on me that I'll never forget. Well, some of them. <coughs> It'd be really tough for me to pick a favorite Resident Evil game, but the new remake is definitely up there. I'm a huge fan of 3. I love Nemesis. In fact, a few years ago, if you haven't seen it yet, I did a video of a pumpkin carving for Halloween of Nemesis. Um, link that up here. And um, I still have this little sketch here, actually, that I thought would be cool to show, since it's sort of a Resident Evil themed video. But uh, this guy, you can only see him for a couple of seconds in the video. And this was actually sculpted with a little less dimension to sort of try to get it to translate better onto a pumpkin. And sometimes I'll do that when, before carving a pumpkin to just work out the forms or whatever. And 
since you only have so much to work with before you break through the pumpkin. I really wanted to revisit this guy at some point, but I thought he would make a cool pumpkin too, so I went ahead and did that. I think I only, s I can't remember exactly, but I think I only spent like an hour to an hour and a half. It goes really fast when you don't have the rest of the head or the ears. It obviously it doesn't have a nose or anything like that to worry about, so. Anyway, after my first playthrough with Leon and being chased around the game the entire time by Mr. X, once I got to the end and I saw that super tyrant crash down from that bridge, Come on. I was like, yes. So let's get to it. Shoot, that was fast. 
So I couldn't resist the opportunity to throw in a bunch of detail on this guy. Uh, I know it looks time consuming and complicated, but really it wasn't that bad. As for this one being a sketch, it was actually quicker to just add all this texture all over. One of the properties of oil-based clay that you can use to your advantage sometimes is the ability to melt it. I don't really use that technique very often because I always try to sculpt with intention. If something has to look a certain way, then I'll take the time to get in there and tool it that way to get it as close to the source material as I can. The thing is, you can try to do it methodically, but sometimes the results of just melting the clay can be sort of inconsistent. So if I were... So if I were doing this for a company, I might have gone about things a little bit differently, but this way is really a lot of fun, and since it's just a quick sculpt, there's no real pressure to make it super accurate or anything, so I went ahead and abused the torch on this. Now, if you didn't catch it, the eyes, teeth, and claws were all made from translucent Sculpey. And I like to use this stuff sometimes for little add-on pieces because it gives a nice little contrast and just kind of adds a little bit of realism to the raw sculpted piece. Here are a few extra teeth that I made. All you have to do is sculpt it, bake it, and then if you want certain parts, you can add a little bit of gloss. For the eyes in particular, I took a little bit of red colored thread and just kind of pulled it apart so I had these little tiny strands and just placed them on the eye and then glossed right over them and you get these nice bloodshot capillaries that they look real when you see them in person. Another benefit of using Sculpey or any polymer clay for that matter, is that you can sculpt it and then bake it and then being little add-on pieces and stuff like that, you can either build on top of it and you can just work with little fine pieces that you don't have to worry too much about denting the piece or messing it up or working on the area around that little part. It's good stuff. I wasn't sure I was gonna do the hand because it's like, four times the size of the head, but uh, once I blocked it in, I thought it looked cool, so I included it. The hand was sculpted in Chavant medium grade, and that's just so that I could move the material around faster. It was a lot easier to, to tuck things in and, and push things around. As for the texture on the head and the shoulder, I used a small lava rock bead that I glued to a toothpick. There, now it's focused. You gotta do this. My girlfriend watches a lot of those beauty tutorials and they're always doing this to get the camera to focus. I guess it works, but I always laugh when they do it. Uh, anyway, I just glued that to the, the tip of a toothpick and used it as sort of a texture roller to cover the fleshy bits with a, a rough, scaly, zombie-like texture. And I think it worked okay. Well, Resident Evil's beat. Got myself a super tyrant sculpted. I'd say it's been a pretty successful snow day. Guess I'm off to do some shoveling. Say hi to my neighbor. Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification. Hope this is not Chris's blood. <sighs> no, Barry. It's not my blood, it's a hot sauce stain from a sandwich I had last week. But thanks for your concern. Yeah, don't mention it. Did you see the surprise I left in your yard? You should go downstairs and check it out. How about going down to check by yourself? Well, I made it for you, Barry. I even got some help from my YouTube friends. I know it might be tough to tell what it is, but some of them are still learning. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's the equivalent of a 911 call to the douche police. Now get out of here and check it out. What? <laughs> Don't scare me. Uh, I just had something I wanted to check. Something you wanted to check? In my studio. And what would that be? The sandwich. The sandwich? The sandwich is gone, dude. I told you I ate it last week. Actually, I didn't even eat all of it. The restaurant put sun-dried tomatoes on it, and it just ruined the whole thing. I threw it out. What the hell? What a monster. What a monster. I can't believe... What the hell? What? I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm not into sun-dried tomatoes. Perhaps that was the most important part. Look, B, I don't have time for this right now. I'm trying to make a video here, and you just come up in my studio, and you keep touching stuff and zooming around here like some sort of drugged-up squirrel, and then you- Watch out for that garbage door! Shoot, it's wide open! Then... Are you alright? I'm really embarrassed. Yeah. 
Me too. Whoa! This hall is dangerous! Wait, I found something. I have a rope here. Barry, you can just walk Grab out the- rope! No! Damn you! Barry, quit screwing around and get out there of there. There must be a back door somewhere. Just open the hatch and come back up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Sorry. I was really careless. Uh-huh. Listen, why don't you just go stand over there in the soldier's area while I finish this video? I'm gonna stay in the soldier's area and take a look around. Fine. Now where are we? We? Well, you're in the soldier's area, buddy. Also known as my cat's litter box. Does it work? I don't know, Barry. Take it for a spin. Oh. Oh, you better not be- Dude, watch out for my cat! Dude! I'm sorry. Do you think we could see Tyrant now? <sighs> yeah. W wash your hands first. He's on the desk over there. Look at this. Look at this. Just take a look at this. Oh my god. Thanks, man. It's it's not that good. It's just a quick sculpt. It's not even painted or anything. It looks like he was killed by a crow or something. Yeah, a crow, Barry. A crow killed the tyrant. Yeah, I think I'm getting old. Me too, Barry. Me too. Don't be angry. Ready to go? Yeah. Let's get out of here. Oh, and you're probably going to want to grab that shovel over there. <laughs>